Hello and welcome to the Philippines. How to move your stuff in the Philippines is the topic today because I've had a number of people over the months ask me how to move your stuff. Are there moving companies? This particular truck is a uh, Isuzu Elf and uh, you can ask Filipinos if they know somebody with a truck or van depending upon your needs. Uh, you can do a search online, uh, different marketplaces, uh, Facebook has a marketplace, and you can find people with small trucks, small vans, an elf like this. Uh, here, the, my, I was helping my friend move, and uh, there was some additional products that need to be uh, purchased. And this was the second part. How do you get a delivery from the uh, from a store you buy some appliance something too large to carry to put in the taxis which tend to be rather small though there there are a few uh, a little bit larger taxis but uh, not not too large and uh, you can you can uh, use grab they've got a few larger vehicles as well uh, anyway we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just the logistics getting things moved and uh, one thing you'll find like like the previous the elf moving uh, condominium. I've lived in f five different condominiums, uh, so I've moved a number of times. First one, I actually I didn't have very much at all, I, and I was only moving about four blocks. I carried uh, virtually all of my stuff. I think I uh, used a tricycle for one load, a little bit heavier stuff. Um, but anyway, when you uh, when you get a van, I think that van. Uh, they, they charged, uh, they originally quoted 1500 for that uh, first Elf van to go rel relatively short uh, distance, end up being two trips. Should have been three trips, but everything was not uh, ready to go, so it wasn't properly packed uh, when they showed up, or it would have been three trips. I think they end up paying because of the extra trip. Uh, end up paying 2,000 pesos, about 40 U.S. dollars. Now, if you buy something in in the malls or any place, stores, lumber yard, uh, building supply house, uh, they usually know they don't have delivery drivers themselves usually, but they've got somebody that they know they can call. And I've had this. I've, I've purchased uh, some building materials, a relatively small amount. And uh, they called somebody, cost me 800 pesos, about 16 US dollars. This particular uh, trip here for, for this small little uh, pickup or, or elf truck again is, I think my friend paid 750 pesos, about 15 US dollars, so relatively cheap compared to what you would pay in many countries. And I'm going to bring you along for the ride as well, so you're going to get to see a little bit of uh, different areas of Cebu City that you n probably wouldn't normally see. This is SM Mall in Cebu City. And uh, back during normal times, over a year ago, there would be many, many, many more customers in here. Uh, but you'll find that uh, with the economic uh, issues, with the lockdowns, with the... Uh, the fear in the population, very few people are spending money except for food. Everybody needs food, so people are spending food, but they're trying to uh, budget that. More people going to the markets, buying uh, buying uh, cheaper items. Cabalan, that is a Filipino-type buffet. I've eaten there once. If you like Filipino food, You'll probably like that place, relatively inexpensive. And here's the, uh, the, the little truck that was rented. And uh, I'm going to ride in the back of that and give you, a, give you a view from the back, riding in the back of that uh, van, back of that truck. There again, uh, generally, you, know, you don't have to tip people here, but uh, Generally, tip people. The grocery store, they will, if you've got a lot of uh, items, they will take them out to the taxi stand for you. And, uh, you know, 20 peso tip oftentimes is common. I think we tipped uh, these people 50 pesos a piece, I believe. 
not positive because I didn't handle that, but I think that uh, was the transaction. These malls all have their own private security that uh, help direct traffic. And you got your big, uh, your big parking ramp up there ahead. And off we go. One thing I like about the, uh, the Philippines, uh, they don't have so many restrictions. I wouldn't be allowed to ride in the back of a uh, truck back in the USA and many other countries, I'm sure. Everybody needs to have a seatbelt on. I can ride in the back of a truck just like I did when I was a kid. And yes, there, there's risks. There's risks when you wake up in the morning. There's risks when you go, go to bed at night. And I'm willing to accept certain risks to, uh, to enjoy life. Another point about, about renting, somebody commented uh, on, a, on a video. There is the Radisson Blue right next. Many of you have stayed there, you've eaten at their buffet. And uh, I think they're building a Radisson Red over in Mandawi. But uh, anyway, getting back to the topic, something about, about renting. Somebody made a comment that never expect to get your deposit back if you're renting in the Philippines. And they stated if you're renting in Thailand, 80% of the time you won't get your deposit back. And uh, then they, they made a comment about another country too, but... Uh, I have rented uh, five different places, and I have uh, I've gotten my deposit back each and every time. I've rented from Australian twice, uh, Filipino twice, and went through a uh, real estate broker once, and uh, haven't had any any issues. I, I leave places uh, cleaner, as clean or cleaner than when I when I move in, so it's it's not an issue. Uh, condominium right there ahead of me on the right is Sun Vida and uh, I have an Australian friend who I've rented from and he had two units there he sold one he still has a studio unit for sale and he's willing to negotiate a, a bit if anybody's interested you can contact me at, at, at my email which is uh, in the uh, pinned in the comment section and this condominium up here San Remo, I believe. Uh, a little bit of an older condominium. I've done a video in there uh, several years ago. Many of you know I've got uh, over 900 videos up, and I've done a lot of uh, a lot of uh, videos in condominiums. I started doing that. The uh, real estate people in the malls would grab me and say, "Come and look at my condominium right now." And uh, this is Arrow Tower up here. It used to be a condominium type setup, and then they switched it over just to employees of that uh, the company that was out of the building. Kids sitting on the street, they saw my camera. Hey! That uh, taller building straight ahead of us, that is a land traders condominium. And I understand it's running, uh, running, uh, a bit late, as many condominiums are. It's not uncommon, but uh, their their offices are right around the corner. If you want more details, uh, I can put you in touch with the, the realty people that deal with that. Now, I am not a realtor, broker, not involved in in that business. Um, I've got a camera. I take videos, put them up. I have. Uh, I don't get commissions, kickbacks. Some people mm -hmm. think I do. I do not, have not. <laughs> Summit, Gallery, a hotel. Summit Gallery Hotel up there. They've got a, a Summit Hotel down on Robinson Fuentes Media Gallery. Circle, and this is the newer one down here, right next to uh, Robinson's Gallery Mall, just to the left. I did get involved in uh, planning some of the logistics for this move, and uh, I guess my experience moving many times in the USA, uh, you know, you, you always think, well, what could possibly go wrong if you do if you do this? What could possibly go wrong? And uh, I had that discussion about, you know, uh, at first there was the desire to rent a larger truck to make sure you, they only had to make one trip. 
And I suggested, well, the, the trucks you're looking at don't have any sides on them. So it's, it's kind of like a flatbed. So then what happens if you don't have everything tied down properly? And you hit a bump, you go around the corner, and all that stuff is going to go end up on the street. Uh, so that number one. Number two, if you hire that larger truck, you've got height limits. Uh, in this case, uh, they were going to drive inside the basement parking area, and there would be a height limit there. Uh, so you need to know that type of information. Uh, there's also the length. Uh, if, if, if they would have uh, got the longer truck, longer flatbed type truck, uh, there's no way that they would have gone in and been able to get in there and turn the corner to and, and park back into the spot that that they wanted to back into to use the uh, elevators. And in this case, they actually used, the, they were not allowed to use the pass two passenger elevators. They had to use uh, the housekeeping elevator, utility elevator. And fortunately, it was big enough. That's another thing to think about. Uh, is that elevator large enough to hold some of your furniture if you're moving into a condominium? Of course, if you're moving into a house, that's a, that's a different thing. You've got o overhead wires to think about if you're stacking things very high. What could possibly go wrong? Answer those questions. Turns out they also had to have certain documents uh, in three days before the move, and that almost held up the move. Uh, they had to wait about an hour uh, for the admin people, administration people, to come in and uh, get the proper paper paperwork filled out. So uh, check both ends. Check all the details. Uh, maybe there's a time limit on trucks on certain streets that you're going to live on. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Hoping you all travel soon again.